And this is the myth that I am going to drive the final stake in the heart of. Okay, and we just published a paper today that is the final nail in the coffin. Okay, never to rise again. Dracula will is now dead. Okay, this paper just came out in biochemical pharmacology 12 hours ago, and it is about obesity and obesogens, that is chemicals that cause obesity having nothing to do with calories. But the myth is, well, it's about calories. And if it's about calories, then it's about energy balance. Therefore, if you're fat, it's your fault. Therefore, diet and exercise. Therefore, any calorie can be part of a balanced diet. Therefore, don't pick on our calories. Go pick on somebody else's calories. That's what the food industry tells us. And if it were about calories, they'd be right. But it's not about calories. That's exactly what's wrong. So let me show you what I mean. Here we have a picture that I took from in a Rome restaurant window. And here you have Italian steak. And here you have Argentinian steak. And down here we have U.S. grade A prime corn-fed beef. What do you see? You see marbling down here, right? These guys, red and homogeneous, red and homogeneous. But down here, we see marbling. We prize our steaks for being able to be cut with a butter knife. And this is where all the flavor is. And so American steaks are prized the world over. <clears throat> the question is, what's this versus what's this? And the answer is, these animals were fed on grass in the Mendoza Valley. I'm uh, sorry, Argentina, Mendoza Valley. These guys were fed on corn, corn-fed beef. This is intramyocellular lipid. This is fat in the muscle. And this is what your muscles look like because this is metabolic syndrome. We just kill these animals before they get sick. These animals go from birth to slaughter in 18 months. These animals go from birth to slaughter in six months. Cash flow. How about this? Which egg is the healthy one? The one on the right or the one on the left? Turns out the one on the left. Because this hen ate grass. This hen, hen ate corn. Why is this yolk orange and this yolk yellow? Answer, omega-3s. Omega-3s. Omega-3s are anti-inflammatory, anti-Alzheimer's, anti-cardiovascular disease. But this is a store-bought egg. This is a pasture-raised egg. Turns out everybody thought the problem was saturated fat. Everybody thought fat was the bad guy. Well, Turns out, not so much. So here we have a what's called the Prospective Urban and Rural Epidemiology Study, or the PURE study that came out in 2017. And Salim Youssef was the uh, uh, pr first primary investigator. And you can see here, we're looking at cardiovascular, total mortality and cardiovascular disease based on energy from fat. If the curve goes below the horizontal line, it's protective. If the curve goes above the line, that means it's causative. Notice energy from total fat, protective. Energy from saturated fat, protective. Energy from monounsaturated fat, protective. Energy from polyunsaturated fat, protective. Only energy from carbohydrate is causative. Turns out it's not the fat, but we've been saying it's the fat for the last 50 years. We've been saying saturated fat is the bad guy. Well, turns out there are two kinds of saturated fats. There's red meat saturated fats and there's dairy saturated fats. And it turns out that dairy saturated fat is not the same as red meat saturated fat. Red meat saturated fat are 16 carbon or 18 carbon uh, uh, fats, all right? And uh, dairy saturated fats are odd chain, C15 or C17, and they have a specific phospholipid signature 
on the tail, which actually turns out to be protective against diabetes and heart disease. As you can see, the curve below the horizontal line for each of these. So it turns out when we went low fat in the 1970s, we actually took out the protective fats as well as the fats that maybe aren't as good. How about surrogate markers, like for instance, LDL? Now, everybody says LDL is correlated with cardiovascular disease. That's true, it is, all right? And here's the diamond that shows the meta-analysis. And you'll notice the hazard risk ratio for high LDL and heart disease is 1.3, meaning if you have a high LDL, you have a 30% increased risk of uh, dying from a heart attack. True. Now, the public health community says 1.3 is the cutoff point. Less than 1.3, not a public health issue. 1.3 or greater, public health issue. So LDL is like right on the button, right on the, right on the, uh, on the edge. And you can see here, the diamond does not cross one. So it is statistically significant. And I don't argue this, this is true. However, there is a, um, uh, a lipid that is much, much worse. And it is called serum triglycerides, okay? Which you also get on your lipid profile. And you'll notice the hazard risk ratio for triglycerides and cardiovascular death is 1.8. You can see right here, 1.8, okay? Much higher, all right? Turns out the triglyceride is a much bigger problem than the LDL ever was. But we've been treating the LDL, not the triglycerides. We've been treating LDL with statins. Do they work? And it turns out you have to look at the data really carefully for secondary prevention. That is, if you've already had a heart attack and you've already declared yourself at risk, then statins do lower your risk for a second heart attack. That's true. But for primary prevention, that is giving people statins because their LDL is high, like you go to your doctor when you're 40 years old and the doctor does your blood test and says, yeah, your LDL is 150. Maybe you should take a statin. Turns out the data for that is absolutely zero. Zero right there, zero. Okay. And there's another paper that just came out like a week ago which redid all these uh, analyses even tighter. And turns out that the, uh, the um, in increase in longevity from being on a statin for primary prevention is four days. You get four days out of a statin. Randomized control trials of drug or dietary interventions, no benefit on mortality. Most of these trials did not reduce cardiovascular events and some of the drug studies actually reported harm. Like for instance, diabetes. Here's the diamond for diabetes and statin use. 20% increase in, statin, in, in diabetes among statin users. And the reason is because the statins are actually poisoning the mitochondria. It's one of the reasons they work. My colleagues, Asim Malhotra, who is a member of the National Health Trust in the UK, Rita Redberg, who is the editor-in-chief of JAMA Internal Medicine, and Pascal Meyer, the editor-in-chief of BMJ Open Heart, not exactly lightweights in this field, wrote this editorial back in 2017. Saturated fat does not clog the arteries. Coronary heart disease is a chronic inflammatory condition, the risk of which can be effectively reduced from healthy lifestyle interventions. And what they said is that the, the big problem is insulin resistance, which leads to systemic inflammation, which causes the coronary disease problem. And what is driving that? Excess sugar, fructose specifically, and refined carbohydrate. Indeed, because the carbohydrate is what increases mortality. And the reason is because it induces insulin resistance. And insulin resistance, as I told you at the beginning of this talk, is the thing that is underneath all eight of those chronic metabolic diseases. The type 2 diabetes, the hypertension, the dyslipidemia, the cardiovascular disease, the cancer, the dementia, the fatty liver disease, the polycystic ovarian disease. The 88% of people in America who are metabolically ill, they have insulin resistance and they have it because of the excess fructose and refined carbohydrate consumption. <laughs>